What's happening, MJ traders and investors? It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on The Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Monday, it's December 18th. Hope you're doing well and hope you had a fantastic weekend. In this video, we're going to be discussing Canadian MJ insolvencies continue to persist and also Canopy sells This Works, their skincare line. And th this is another move that they've been trying to right the ship, right? They're trying to become asset light and get rid of different parts of their business that aren't really contributing to growth and overall uh, the success of the company. So we're gonna discuss all of this and more. I'll give my thoughts and opinions on this news. Curious to hear what the community thinks about this as well. And then we'll also look at the canopy growth chart here toward the end. We'll do some charting, some technical analysis. I'll give my thoughts and opinions in terms of price action in the days, weeks, months ahead. But obviously this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. And you should never ever buy anything based on anything that I write or anything that I say. And full disclosure, I am a shareholder of Canopy Growth. Before we get to it though, make sure to smash the like. I would appreciate it very much. Love each and every one of you who supported me along the way. It helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the little bell, all that good stuff, and you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. Also, you can give us a follow over on X, which is formerly Twitter. Handle for that is at Group Pow. And we also signed up for Odyssey and Rumble platforms as well in case we ever get silenced here on YouTube. So there's an article here from MJ Biz Daily. Canadian MJ insolvencies persist in 2023 amid industry woes. And then this other article from MJ Biz Daily talking about Canopy selling its skincare unit to Inspirit Capital. This works. So we're gonna discuss all of that and more. Uh, also, we just had a reverse split video that I just posted. So if you haven't seen that, you can check that out. But essentially that's going to occur this week on Wednesday. And it's gonna be a one for 10 reverse split. And a lot of people on this video were saying, don't you think Canopy is going to go bankrupt? And then I saw this article here with regards to insolvencies and bankruptcies, and I thought it went hand in hand. And no, I do not think Canopy is going to go bankrupt. And if you're throwing around the B word that easily, I mean, I've already done videos on this. Uh, I've done a reverse split. I've done a bankruptcy video on Canopy before. And if you didn't realize that there was more options available to Canopy than just bankruptcy, then I question how much you've actually researched the company or how much you actually researched the sector or how, how much you've actually you know committed to financial markets because if you just, that, that's an emotional way of thinking, right? And this isn't to talk down on anybody. It's just, if you're throwing around the B word all you know carelessly like that without realizing that, oh, they have BioSteel, oh, they have Stores and Bickle, oh, they have This Works, oh, they have all these other facilities and brands. Well, don't you think that they could sell those off before, oh, we're just gonna tap out, you know, wave the flag and we're done, right? We're, we're gonna close up shop. We, we're just gonna end it here, right? No, of course not. They're going to sell off different parts of their business and BioSteel was a contributing to a, a crap ton of their losses, right? So again, I just, when someone says to me, especially like a name like Canopy, right? If it was a name like Ogen or some other companies that we'll go through here in a moment, um, Fire and Flower, okay, maybe, but a name like, Canopy, which was once the darling in the space, it just doesn't make any sense. And then I question how much people actually research the company or if they're just talking out of emotion. And quite often than not, when someone throws around the B word, they're talking through emotion, right? And that's generally what we wanna leave at the door when we're in financial markets, especially some of the most riskiest asset classes on the planet, which are, in my opinion, MJ and crypto. So financially distressed MJ companies continue to seek refuge in Canadian insolvency law in 2023. But it has declined uh, one file, such filings under one statute declined from 2022. So they talk about a struggle to keep operating in face of low MJ prices, high taxes, and trouble accessing new funding. Also, the MJ Act is up for review here in Canada. They're looking to increase the edibles from 10 milligrams to 100 milligrams. And then also something that they could improve is the excise tax, which they go on to discuss here. Seven of the 57 filings under the CCAA Companies Creditors Arrangement Act through December 15, 2023 or about 12% involved MJ companies or related entities. That represents a decline from 2022, when more than a third of all business filings for CCAA had some involvement in MJ. Other troubled MJ companies use a different Canadian insolvency, insolvency statute, the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act, otherwise known as the BIA. Insolvent Canadian MJ companies typically have in common a legacy of huge capital expenditures to build a facility and get licensed, said Tina Frazier, an MJ commercial lawyer. And that's so true, right? I've been saying this for a while now as well is, you know, it's such a different industry because in order, there's so, there's so many regulations, there's so many taxes, there's so many 
you know, red tape and, and hoops you got to jump, jump through. And it's just unlike anything else, right? Before you can even sell one gram, you have to build a facility, you have to put a fence around and security and cameras and get your license and then go through the, you know, the growing process and cultivate and then, you know, hang it and dry it and then trim it and then package it and distribute it and market it. Like that is hundreds, in some cases, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars before you even see $1 of revenue, right? So this is, like I said, it's unlike anything else. And the CCAA allows insolvent Canadian uh, companies to apply for a court order to keep creditors at bay while company restructures its debts and seeks a new buyer or new fi financing, right? And a number of CCA CCAA cases have featured a debtor in possession of a loan for a would-be buyer who puts in a stocking horse bid, which just basically means they are trying to maximize the assets before they go to auction. And uh, in that bid to buy the insolvent company or even just some of its assets. Notable CCAA filings in MJ in, 23, in 2023 included Fire and Flower Holdings, Alifia Health, and then predecessor of company Cantrust, which was involved in a major scandal involving growing plants inside unlicensed areas of its facility, which that was a crazy story in, its, in and of itself, but just goes to show you how crazy the, the MJ industry has been over the, you know, the last five years since it turned legal. Other CCAA filings involved MJ companies and MJ related entities this year include Chalice Brands, we had Plant Based Investment Corp, Capsium, and Biosteel, which was owned by Canopy, right? So again, before you go throwing around the B word, you have to look at look at a company's assets, look at a company's brands, look at a company's, you know, uh, overall portfolio and realize that oh, you know, they still they still have a ton of assets and brands and uh, divisions that they could sell off, right? Like Stores and Bickle is a huge one as well. We'll go through this a little bit quicker here. So CCAA is only available to Canadian companies with debts exceeding 5 million Canadian dollars. And some other uh, companies have turned to the BIA. So that was Ogen was one of them. Affected nearly 90 employees. Heart goes out to the employees that lost their jobs. I did a video on Ogen as well. But the president, Darren Brisebois, described the company as a very efficient organization. We sold every gram we produced, but we couldn't make a go for it, particularly the price compression. And as the revenue per gram decreased, our percentage of excise tax on sales actually increased. So how crazy is that, right? Obviously, there has to be a change there. You add on top of that property tax, regulatory fees, Health Canada fees, and then Alberta Gaming, Liquor, and MJ fees, the provincial wholesaler. I mean, we were paying 40 to 45% right off the top to government agencies. That's insane. Tantalus Labs also filed under the BIA, and they talked about difficulty with tax debts to government. So the government is the biggest beneficiary of MJ legalization, as we know. Um, Erwin Simon said it as well, that the federal government now is the biggest creditor to the MJ space, and it has to do with tax, excise tax owed to Canadian government. That's a big thing in these filings, right? So the CRA, Tax Authority, and the federal MJ regular Regulator Health Canada, with charges companies' regulatory fees, tend to be major creditors for insolvent MJ companies. And that, you know, this is just, and we've heard that Justin Trudeau and the federal government said it's time for the federal government to step up and support the MJ industry. Finally, you know, after five years, finally, I think it's time. Okay, stop wasting your time. Unlike owing money to private sector creditors, MJ companies that owe government agencies risk losing their licenses that they need to do business, right? So this is just absurd. Okay, we'll go through this a little bit quicker here. So yeah, the, a lot of companies couldn't find, they, they wanted to sell facilities and license could usually find a buyer. That's no longer the case. We're at a point where a lot of sites are on the market and there's a lot of sites available for sale that aren't finding buyers. And then, yeah, it goes to show that it's troubling times. But this news here from Canopy, so they sold skin uh, their skincare unit. This works to Inspirit Capital for $15.9 million. This is part of their asset light model plan. And then... They acquired it though for approximately 73.8 million in cash in 2019. So that is a far cry away from what they paid for it. Uh, Canopy said the acquisition was a key aspect of their hemp and CBD strategy. So we'll go through this a little bit quicker here. This year, Canopy had grossed more than 155 million from the sale of seven properties in Canada, including its former headquarters in Smith Falls, Ontario. So again, let this be a lesson next time you're throwing around the, the B word emotionally, look into what the company could do, right? What are their options before throwing around the B word, right? And this was very evident that, you know, 
they weren't going away anytime soon, if ever. I, I would argue that they'll probably be around. They'll probably one of the, whether they M&A, whether they merge or acquire another company, who knows? But I can't see them going away, at least not anytime soon. But if I had to, you know, if I had to guess, I would say they're probably going to swim long term. They're probably going to be one of the long term players. So this will strengthen their balance sheet and their financial position. They're pleased to have found a buyer that is committed to continue to develop the brand. And yeah, just inconsistent sales. So that's pretty much it. We'll jump into the chart here. So as a reminder, we do have the reverse split. And again, if you haven't seen that video, you can check out that video that I recently did. We do have the reverse split coming up on Wednesday this week, December 20th, and it's gonna be a one for 10. So let's say the price is at 48 cents now. If on Wednesday, the price was at 48 cents, it would be worth $4.80, right? So you just times the price by 10, and then you divide the shares by 10. So however many shares you have, if you have 100,000 shares, you divide it by 10, you'll have 10,000 shares. If you have the price at 48 cents, then it's worth, you times it by 10, it's worth $4.80. And I hear a ton of people saying, oh, I'm gonna have no shares after this. Well, it doesn't matter, right? It's just an accounting trick. The price is, the value of your investment is still the same. Price goes up by 10, shares go down by 10. There's really no difference, right? It's the same thing with a regular stock split when the price goes down and your shares go up, right? There's no change to the value in your account or in that investment. It's just, you know, it's a it's a financial wizardry trick. Right? <laughs> That's all it is. It's a way to manipulate the markets. It's a way for companies and Wall Street institutions to keep their investments on the NASDAQ on the way down. And then it's a way for them to stock split and use exit, retail as exit liquidity on the way up, right? So regular stock splits, reverse stock splits, they're all a way for these financial institutions to manipulate the market and continue to make retail lose, right? It's just a way, another way to make the market unfair and unorderly, the exact opposite of what the SEC is destined to do. And that is their mission to create fair and orderly markets, which we knew, which we know is an absolute um, joke. Uh, it just, that's not the case, right? They're, it's all about protecting the financial institutions and the Wall Street banks and the hedge funds and the institutions, not retail investors, right? So if we take a look at the CGC chart, I mentioned in a couple of videos that I expected more downside. I said that we could still see a weekly MACD bear cross, which we're getting now. And then sure enough, we're losing the low of last week and we're coming up on key support there at 47 cents. We did have a double bottom there at 47 cents, and then today we hit 47 cents. So this is now a triple bottom. We had the EMA 12 and 26 bear cross, but we could be heading to daily oversold. The S&P 500 hasn't started weekly consolidation yet, but it, it is due, it hasn't in a couple of months. So again, we're not in the prediction business. It'll happen when it happens. We just continue to watch the low of the previous week on SPY, the S&P 500. If that's lost, then we can expect headwinds and probably selling pressure on CGC and the rest of the MJ sector. But if you're wondering if 47 cents is going to hold, I'm a little skeptical because we're heading to daily oversold. We could be heading there. We also have some bear flags on MSOS. So if we bring up the ETF that tracks all the major producers in the US and you might be like, why are you looking at US names? We're talking about Canopy. Well, again, you wanna look at what the rest of the sector is doing and the strength of the overall sector because usually they move together right not down to the second the day of the minute but we could see an ema 12 and 26 bear cross it's actually playing out now on msos and it's a perfect daily bear flag targeting about 520 area so that is not good the rest of the sector is not looking too hot at the moment gti has another bear flag as well or some of the names that i was looking at but yeah uh, at this point not looking good if we were to see the rest of the sector continue to be weak tilray was down today almost four percent at the close and then like i said we could still see this weekly macd bear cross but once we get this out of the way i think this is going to be a nice final dip to buy but after 47 cents we have no support down to 38 there's another double bottom down there and then the uh, all-time low on the nasdaq at 34 cents right so like i said not that confident in 47 cents but again if you're looking to play this if you're looking for a swing trade or a day trade or something like that you could look to enter at 47 cents, maybe scale in another one at 45, another one at 40 cents, lower your cost basis, and then look to nail daily oversold and bottom fish that play, right? Um, so like I said, in my previous videos, I was skeptical that this weekly bounce was going, I thought it was a bull trap. I didn't think that it was going to sustain itself because we could still see a MACD bear cross. We had the reverse split looming, which is on Wednesday, and typically into a reverse split, you trend down, and then the MACD bear cross. So it's exactly what I anticipated and exactly what we got, right? It's not, it's not about being right or wrong or predicting the future. It's just looking at the most likely scenario and based on the technicals, based on the fundamentals, everything was pointing to a bit more downside on 
TGC. And something we have to keep in the back of our head is the broader market could see a healthy correction. Again, sizable pullback, but it will just be healthy. But we just got to continue to to monitor key support levels on the broader market as well, the S&P 500. And uh, yeah, it's looking like we could be getting close to a bottom, but a little bit more weakness is ahead in my opinion. And look, on the monthly time frame, this is the most important thing, right? We have the monthly uptrend looking to confirm. We have a higher low, and this is usually when people get faked out in this investor psychology disbelief phase where we're forming a monthly higher low and people usually capitulate. It's that disbelief. It's another sucker's rally. We're never going anywhere from here. And then on the weekly time frame, I was a little skeptical that this was going to be uh, our move to the upside with sustained upside because I didn't think that that momentum would be sustained because of the fact that the weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross was so far away. When these EMAs are that far away from bull crossing, you need to expect a little bit more consolidation and pullback until they tighten up, right? If these were right next to each other, like right here, for example, we'll go back, right? When we had this breakout here, skeptical because we were a ways away before we saw those EMAs cross bullish. But then on this consolidation, look how close they were. So then you're a little bit more confident that a big move is coming. And sure enough, we went from $13 up to 56. Then we had the bear cross, went from $20 down to 34 cents. Now we're seeing a bull cross, way more beaten down this time around. This is looking pretty good. And then it was the same thing with regards to the golden cross, right? We were very, very far away from seeing those moving averages cross the 50 and the 200 and seeing a golden cross. Last time that happened, again, price went from about 13 bucks all the way up to $56. Then we had a death cross, 50 crossed above the 200. Price went from about 25 down to $25 down to 34 cents. Now we're seeing a golden cross. But again, back here on this move, and then again on this move, we we're still very, very far away. So I said it was more than likely going to be weeks, if not months, before we see that cross and some sustained momentum and upside action. So it's getting close. I would say we're months away. And like keep in, keep in mind, we still have tax loss settle, selling and harvesting into the end of the year. Seeing a bunch of people on social media saying that tax loss harvesting isn't going to be a thing this year. What, when is that never <laughs> a thing? That's always a thing. Uh, a little bit naive in my opinion. And then there was some news with regards to a potential institution that was rebalancing and doing some tax, lo uh, tax loss harvesting. So it's always a thing. I, I, I don't know why. I don't understand the logic behind that. But I think uh, into Q1... Uh, 2024 and Q2, we're going to see the sector really start to gain momentum and uh, we could see rescheduling updates and progress as well, which will be positive in my opinion. Just did a video on Cureleaf and Boris Jordan thinks that we could get some movement on that by April 420 potentially. Wouldn't that be something? All right, going down it there, it's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth. Let me know what you think of this news. Going down it there, hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you again on the next video.